discuss about the topic cholestasis. In the previous videos, we have already discussed and told about cholestasis. It is the obstruction of bile outflow. As a result, there will be increased bilirubin, bile acids and salts, and cholesterol. All these three things will be raised. Now, we are moving on to type of cholestasis. The first one is intrahepatic cholestasis. As the name suggests, it is an obstruction to bile outflow that is happening within the liver. Okay. The obstruction here is within the small bile ducts or canaliculi within the liver. It can be due to many reasons. One of the main reason is hereditary disorders. It is the hereditary disorders that is producing intrahepatic obstruction. Since it is an inborn disorder, we can call it as pure cholestasis. Examples, Dubin-Johnson syndrome, Rotor syndrome, etc. The next one is acquired disorders. The name as itself is explaining it. That is, we are acquiring the disease after our birth. It can be some hepatocellular diseases. So, so it is called as hepatocellular cholestasis. Here, the cholestasis is due to some acquired liver diseases. It can be due to viral hepatitis, alcoholic hepatitis, or it can be drug induced. Now we are moving on to the features of intrahepatic cholestasis. We all know that in cholestasis there will be conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Okay, and next is bilirubinuria. Since the liver is damaged, bilirubin can leak into blood and urine. Here I have written as just B, it suggests bilirubin. Okay. So there will be conjugated hyperbilirubinemia and bilirubinuria, sorry, bilirubinuria. It is because the liver is damaged, so bilirubin gets leaked into blood, which is causing conjugated hyperbilirubinemia and urine causes bilirubinuria. Here is a pictorial representation of that. We can see that from the liver to the gut, it is blocked. And from there, the conjugated bilirubin is getting absorbed into the kidney and it is passed through urine. Next feature is elevated level of serum bile acids and alkaline phosphatase. Since there is elevated le levels of bile acids and phosphatases, it can cause pruritus to the patient. Pruritus means it is itching. And there will be hyperlipidemia. So we told that there will be increased level of cholesterol which causes hyperlipidemia. And in hepatocellular cholestasis there is increased serum level of transaminases. It is due to the liver cell injury. Okay. Next we are moving on to the liver biopsy. The picture of liver in biopsy. Compared to extrahepatic cholestasis, the degree of cholestasis will be milder in intrahepatic cholestasis. Due to the accumulation of bile, the canaliculi, canaliculi means the smaller bile ducts, it will be dilated and there will be production of green colored bile plugs. Bile plugs is present between individual hepatocytes and it represents the obstruction. It is due to obstruction that there is production of bile plugs. And the cytoplasm of hepatocytes will be showing a feathery degeneration. And there will be periportal fibrosis. What is periportal means? It is periportal means tissues surrounding a portal vein. Fibrosis means it is the excessive deposition of collagen. So, we are finished with the intrahepatic cholestasis. Next, we are moving on to extrahepatic cholestasis. It is due to the mechanical obstruction to large bile ducts 
outside the level sorry outside the liver or within porta hepatis here the obstruction is happening outside the liver okay the causes can be tumors of bile duct inflammatory structures gallstones congenital atresia of ducts so many reasons are there next it is the types of extra hepatic cholestasis there are two types they are complete and sudden with eventually progressive obstructive jaundice partial and incomplete inter with intermittent jaundice next is the features of extra hepatic cholestasis there are so many features as we told earlier there will be conjugated hyperbilirubinemia bilirubinuria an elevated level of serum bile acids causing pruritus elevated alkaline phosphatases and hyperlipidemia and there will be malabsorption of fat soluble vitamins which are the fat soluble vitamins they are a d e and k another feature is steatorrhea what is steatorrhea it is the excretion of abnormal quantities of fat with the feces due to reduced absorption of fat by the intestine that is the intestine is not reabsorbing the fat so it is getting excreted through the feces which results in vitamin k deficiency okay since there is vitamin k deficiency and also the vitamin k is very important in clotting there will be prolonged prothrombin time but this prolonged prothrombin time will shows improvement after parenteral administration of vitamin k it is a very important point of extra hepatic cholestasis what that is the improvement of prolonged prothrombin time after parenteral administration of vitamin k next is clay colored stools due to absence of bilirubin metabolite we know that here the bilirubin is not reaching the intestine so there is absence of bilirubin metabolite so the feces is having a clay color next is virtual disappearance of eoblinogen from urine since the bilirubin is not reaching the intestine there is absence of eoblinogen in the urine next is the liver biopsy of extra hepatic cholestasis compared to intra hepatic there will be marked changes of cholestasis in extra hepatic one in the intra hepatic we discussed about bile plugs here it is bile lakes the bile plugs in the duct causes sufficient pressure which causes the rupture of ducts results in the spilling of bile to the tissues forming bile lakes so we discussed with the we have finished discussing with the liver biopsy of extra hepatic cholestasis next is neonatal jaundice it happens when the total serum bilirubin level is more than 3 mg per dl it can be conjugated or unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia so we finished we have finished with intrahepatic and extrahepatic cholestasis if you have any doubts you can mention it in the comment box please like share and subscribe thank you